The tool that we'll use is called SQL Server Data Tools, and this is where in the Start menu you can find it under the SQL Server 2012 program item. And as a first step, we can just launch that shell. So this launches uh, a Data Tools, which is hosted within Visual Studio 2010. And our first step will be to create a new project. So I'm just going to click New Project and I can see the templates I have to choose from. A previous lesson we took a quick look at using this project template which is import a power pivot workbook but we're not going to do that this time we're actually going to create an analysis services project using tabular model and I can see that that's tabular with these kind of table kind of shapes on here. Um, up above would be my multi-dimensional models so I'll click on that one and tabular project one is not a great name but I'm going to keep that name. So what you'll want to do is give this project basically the name that you want to use for your database in analysis services and then if you'd like to use a different solution name you can do that but I'm going to just go with the defaults. So as I click OK this will create a blank project for me and before we get started there's one item that I, I really want to highlight for you and that's how the design process works. So if you remember in Excel as we were designing our tabular model and creating calculations and so on we could really see the results immediately and that's because the in-process analysis services instance within the Power Pivot add-in would, would immediately start um, adjusting the model and querying and you, and you could see we had to hit the refresh button and so on. Uh, we're going to be doing the same thing in the Visual Studio environment and there there will be the need to have an instance of analysis services make uh, immediate changes to the model so we can see what our changes uh, actually do. But in the Visual Studio environment we have some choice over where we want those those uh, immediate edits to be made. And the way we change that is if I right click on the model BIM file and click properties there are some properties here. And one of those is workspace server. So you do have to be mindful that the workspace server is actually configured for an instance of analysis services in tabular mode that you have access to. My in, in my environment on this workstation I have analysis services installed locally in tabular mode so I'm going to leave this setting. But if you happen to be using data tools on your workstation and you don't have analysis services installed you'll need to address that either by installing an instance locally for your design environment or by pointing this workspace, workspace server setting to a remote analysis services instance that you have a, some administrative access to. If you do use a remote instance just keep in mind that you know you'll be making changes to the model you'll want almost immediate feedback that may be difficult to achieve with the remote analysis services instance so my recommendation would be to install a local analysis services instance on the workstation that you use for development. Kind of get started with this project and I'm just going to really import one table and deploy it so that you can just see how it works. So we're not going to concentrate on building the model at this point. We just want to see um, how it works. So if I go to the model menu, I'm going to import from a relational source, which is probably the most common thing you'll do. And I'm going to call that SQL Server. You can see so far this is almost identical to the Excel experience. And the server I'm going to get the data from is Lab SQL 1. And I'm just going to use Contosa Retail that we've been using. Test is fine. All right, next. Um, this is an important dialog and it's basically asking us um, when we do deploy this model, where do what account do we want to use to get the data. The best practice is actually to use a, um, a domain account um, rather than the service account. You'll actually get a warning if you use a service account, though you can. I'm just going to put my username and authentication, which is maybe not a best practice, but it will work fine. And then I'm going to just go in here and choose some table. I'm going to choose the date table. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to build a real model. We'll do that in the next lesson. And I'll click Finish. So what's happening? It's actually my development environment has gone out to the database, pulled in the data, and loaded it into that local analysis services instance that I just talked about. And I have something that looks almost just like the Excel environment. Um, it's 
blue rather than green, but otherwise everything's the same. I could create new columns, I could create measures here, and if I want to browse this model, I actually still have the Analyze in Excel button here. So if I want to save all of that, click Analyze in Excel, I actually can browse that tabular model, which is pretty cool. I'll just exit that. Okay, so the last step, once this is designed, is to deploy it. And when I'm going to deploy this to a, an analysis services server, I have to remember to tell it where. So what I did was right-clicked on my project name and came up with this dialog. We'll go through a lot of these other settings in detail in the future, but for now the ones we're concerned with is server. Now this by default will deploy this for production to my local server. That's not where I want it. I actually want to put it on this Lab SQL 1 machine that has analysis services running. The database is called Tabular Project and, and that's fine. Um, addition, um, we won't worry about. Uh, cube name is called Model, but I don't like that name so I'm going to call this Sales, or maybe better yet, Store Sales. Okay, and the processing option is an important one because the default is that when you deploy your model it will automatically process it on the server. That's fine if you don't have much data. If you have a lot of data this is going to drive you nuts because every time you deploy it will take you know a long time potentially to, um, to reread and reload. So I'd recommend just set that to do not process when you create your project. So that's done. I'll just save all and now to deploy this to the server and since I set my do not process default deploy will just deploy the metadata and if I want to see that that metadata is, is really there I can go into management studio and look so once management studio launches I can connect to my default analysis instance analysis services instance on Lab SQL 1, and I can see Tabular Project 1 is there. I can see that Dim Date is there. So the last thing I'll do is to actually read the data into this model. So I'm going to process the database from here. And if I just say I want to process default the entire database and click OK. And then last, if I'd like to just browse that model to make sure that it really has the data I think it does.